Too many times, too many of us don't really believe there's a process that occurs in something. We think that somehow this occurs and then before we know it, we're over here. We don't understand that there are phases that you go through, one after the other. And when you run into a need or a vision, there are stages you need to go through or else you will end the vision or you will take the vision and make it tiny when it wasn't meant to be tiny or you will only do it for a little and then you'll quit it and it's because you haven't put the foundation down as most people don't realize your vision needs your heart to be engaged and you are the one who must open your heart sometimes your heart is open for you by other people's pain. But for the, most, for the most situations that you come into, you should think to yourself, when this need comes, will I open my heart about this or will I keep it closed? Because if you keep it closed and you just try to do a vision on the, on the mindset of, I know we should do something about this, but your heart doesn't get engaged, you will never achieve the full the fullness that that vision was meant to achieve. So when you open your heart, the next issue that needs to happen is, is this something that you are called to do? Because just because there's a need doesn't mean you're supposed to do it. But sitting down and allowing yourself to open your heart to it is the next stage you do. If you don't do this, you're probably not going to get involved. But when you open yourself and your heart is there and you are embracing the pain that they have, if that stays with you somewhat, then the next phase happens. Take a look at what takes place in the, in the next verse. He sat down and he wept and he mourned, mourned for 30 days. For 30 days. This is when you, watch this, if this is the need, the need is outside of you, it's with other people. And you are, you hear it, you investigate, you seek, you ask questions, and then you open your heart to it. And then you pay attention to how your heart handles it. And if your heart continues to be connected to it, then take it even deeper. And he mourned for 30 days. Do you notice what he didn't do? <laughs> he, he, he didn't try to fix the problem. That's where we make a vast mistake. We don't plant the need deep inside of our soul we don't give it time to put down roots and to spread out in us and to change how we think because we're in a hurry to either brush it aside or say well, what should we do and you've never connected you gotta you gotta connect then you gotta mourn i i you know, what, 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 what actually happens? Let's see if we go over this whiteboard just for a minute and take a look at it. Again, when you think about doing a vision, of being a visionary, that you're here and there is a need out here of other people. Who knows what the need is? But they have a need. It's their need, not your need. A vision is taking this and seeing the need met. In other words, these people no longer have the need because of what you did to meet the need. Now, what we're talking about here is you've got to ask. Don't ask the surface questions. Go ahead and ask something that makes the need come out to you so you see it. And if you're grabbing a hold of what I'm trying to teach you here, 
then you got to come back to you. See, the first step is you're asking them, and you got to get it so the pain comes out. The pain has to come out. It's not just an idea, it's a pain. So when I was talking to that young man at the airport, and he said it was the second problem, as I talked about in the previous session, I said to him, so how do you feel about that in your life? And he looked away and he said, no, no, this is, this is terrible. It is. And how would you feel if that was not true about you anymore? How would you feel if that was not true about you anymore? And he said, no, that would be the best thing that could happen to me. Because he just told me this was the number one problem. So I'm asking him about his pain. He's sharing his pain as he's eating my hamburger and I'm chewing on my lettuce. I want his pain in me. So as I get his pain in me, I start to feel for him. I, I have what's called compassion for him. What is compassion? Compassion is when you feel passion with. That's com means with. With feeling. I feel your need. And I want that need met for you. Because I feel it. Therefore, not only do you want this met, I want it met. Oh. Now, let's say it wasn't just a conversation at the airport. And it's a larger one. You want to make this deeper. And that's where he went and he mourned. He mourned. He let it in big time. And he kept for 30 days. He kept picturing himself here more and more. How do I feel about this? What is my days like? How much hope do I have? How do I feel about raising my kids in this environment? And oh, when is somebody going to solve this problem? And for, for, for a month. And what was happening in here? His heart was taken over <laughs> all of his life. It was taken over all of his life. Why? Because he kept feeding feeding the need and the compassion until it got to him. This is a deep truth, isn't it? Very, very few leaders understand what I'm sharing with you. As I prepared for this, I began to think through, you know, I went through four years of college and then got a fifth year degree and then went to the most advanced master's degree you can get four more years and then took post courses after that. And I thought to myself, how many times did one of my professors talk to me about my personal vision, about a vision for life, about how to find your vision, how to fulfill your vision? Do you realize in all those years, it's a total of nine plus years of post high school, not one professor ever talked about that. And yet this is one of the most important things about all of life. And once you begin to understand this, you can be purposeful. You can say, am I asking? Am I opening my heart? And if it affects me, if it affects me, then will I put myself in it much more deeply? so I could become as if I am one of the people that are suffering? Until when we talk, they say to themselves, oh, how do you know how we feel? Oh, that's it, isn't it? Because the more you feel that way with them, the more you desperately want, you desperately want them to get past it. I remember when I was asked to make a course on AIDS years ago from some of the leaders in Africa, and I, I told them no. I didn't want to make a course on AIDS because I didn't, I didn't know anything about it except the trauma that it was causing. And he said, well, I'm going to get the people in Africa praying that you would change your mind. And I said to him, please don't do that. 
I did not want to deal with this. He came back the next year all the way from Africa and we were eating with a bunch of the leaders I had on my back porch. And he walked over from the group he was talking to. I was talking to leaders from Sri Lanka, India and Nepal. And he was talking to other people from Europe. And he walked over on the back porch and stood in the middle of our porch looking at me. <laughs> and I knew he was going to ask me again. And I walked over and I said, hello. He said, will you make a course on God's answer to AIDS? And I tried to say no. And I couldn't. And I became emotional trying to say no. And finally I said yes. He said, I know, we've been praying for a year. You're called to do this. A couple of weeks went by and it was time to start preparing and I knew I didn't have this in my heart. And if I didn't have it in my heart, then the course wasn't going to change anybody's life. It wasn't going to be a vision not to make a course, but to help stop AIDS. And I couldn't get it in my heart. So I said to God one day, God, I don't have a burden. I don't have compassion about AIDS. Would you share with me how you feel about AIDS? Now, I don't know what you think about asking God to share something that personal with you, but I believe he loves that. He loves sharing himself with us. We just don't hardly ever ask him. So a few weeks went by as I was working and I was working on my computer and an email came over from Africa. And it was from the man who asked me and he says, I was meeting with some of the pastors and they wrote you some emails about how they've been praying for you. And I read one and then read a second one and a third one. I became emotional, just off, just became emotional. And I didn't want to become emotional because I had so much work to do. And I closed the email and went back to work in another 30 minutes to an hour. I can't remember. I opened another one, read another one, and I began to cry out loud. And as I was crying out loud, I realized I wasn't feeling anything. Yet I was crying. That never happened to me before or since, and I didn't know how to interpret it. And I calmed down, closed the email again, went back to work, and then didn't really have a choice. I had to open the rest of the emails, and as I did, I don't know how you'll handle what I'm going to say to you, but it happened to me. I read the next one, and I was knocked out of my chair, meaning I didn't get up. And I didn't fall. I was knocked on the ground. And I was on all fours. And I started wailing. I had never wailed in my life before. And I started heaving. Meaning wailing wasn't enough. And... I was being traumatized and I didn't understand it. I didn't know what was happening to me. And I said to God, God, what is this? And he said to me, you asked me how I feel about AIDS. This is how I feel about AIDS. Oh. You see, I knew enough that God wanted this vision done. I didn't have it in my heart. I couldn't get it there. I asked God to put it there. And his in, kind, in his own kindness, he put it there. And when he did, I never recovered from that in the production of that course and then a movie on that topic. So what about you? Where's your heart in all this? Stop protecting it. In fact, flip it over. Be a person who is intentional 
in opening your heart just like God keeps his heart open. And when he does, he comes to people like you and me and says, let's, let's work on that need together. Oh, talk about significance in life is a vision that's birthed in your heart and has got roots in every part of your life. Don't miss it. It's part of your destiny.